Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be bringing you a new tutorial on how to enhance your graphics in The Sims 3 to make it look like a little bit more of a modern game. The Sims 3 came out in 2009 and there were a few tech enhancements that I think they patched into the game, improved lighting and everything like that, but other than that it does look like a game that came out in 2009 and it is easily thought to be the most ugly of this, all The Sims games. I really don't necessarily agree that it's ugly, but it's definitely not the prettiest game. But there's a few things that you can do to really enhance the visuals and make it look a little bit more modern and a little more appealing. So we're going to be going through that. And we'll start with the environment. I think that's the most important thing. So this is what my current game of Sims 3 looks like. Um, it's fall, so it's actually really pretty time to make this video and this save because it's all like super uh, colorful and bright and pretty. So I have a few different things running. I have some lighting mods, texture mods, um, and then reshade. So I'm going to explain all of that, explain what I'm using, and explain how you can sort of set up your own as well. So if that's interesting, then keep watching. So the first thing that I want to show you is how you can get your game to this step right here that I have. I've gone ahead and disabled my reshade so you can see the game as is just with the visual mods installed that I'm going to be showing you. Um, it is still a very, very large upgrade from what The Sims 3 normally looks like in my opinion and it's a lot more vibrant and beautiful. And so the first thing that I'm going to show you is the lighting mod that I have. So the first step that you're going to want to take in getting your graphics updated in The Sims 3 is to make sure that your game is prepared to run mods. And it's very simple, so you're going to go to your documents. If you have The Sims 3 installed normally, you'll go to documents, electronics arts, The Sims 3, and then there will be a folder, you will add a folder called mods, so you'll just go to new folder, I'm not going to do it because I already have one here, but you'll just create a new folder, mods, and then in that folder you'll create another new folder called packages, and then you're going to want this resource.cfg file to be in this mods folders here with the packages, that's what's going to allow the game to read the files that you put in there, and I'll link that uh, in the description below, but I'm not going to you know, record myself going and downloading it. It's pretty simple, you just download this file, put it here. Um, I'm gonna assume that you have some skill in navigating Windows and everything, and if you don't, there's other tutorials out there to get this set up. I just wanted to give a quick overview, so in case anybody in the comments is like, why is this not working? Maybe you don't have your mods folder set up correctly, and this is what it should look like. So yeah, and then you'll just, I have my mods folder pretty organized by things, and I just put all my graphics stuff right here, um, but you can really organize however you want, it doesn't really matter, but this is just how I do it, so. Okay, and then at this point, you're ready to install mods, and so this is the first mod that we're going to do, this is the lighting mod, it's called Amber Puggles Tropical Aurora Version 2. I really like this mod because it adds some vibrancy to the game, but it's not as blown out as some of the other lighting mods that I've had in the past that I don't like. Um, it does change some things about the sky, but I actually have another mod that I like to use, so my sky doesn't look exactly like this, it's a little bit different. And everything is optional with this, so, I mean, you could really go with any lighting mods that you want. This is the one that I use, though. There's a few others that I'll link below that I've used in the past that some people that are really popular, but this is the one that I like the most. So, like I said, I'm going to assume you have some knowledge about how to install mods, but you'll download this. You need to have something that will allow you to open a zip file. I use 7-zip, um, you can use whatever you know, WinRAR, whatever it is that you use. So once you've downloaded it, this is the file that you're going to find inside that zip file, Amber Puggles Tropical Aurora V2 package, so it's pretty self-explanatory that that's what it is. Now I have it in a subfolder, as I said, you could put it right in the packages folder and it will read it just the same. I just like to keep things organized. So once you have it in here and you have your mod folder set up correctly, once you open the game, you should be able to see the difference. It adds a lot more vibrancy. The next thing I'm going to show you is how you can get clouds, like the ones you see on my screen right now in your game. I love this mod. I think it makes the sky look absolutely gorgeous and I think it works really well with other modding or lighting mods. Now the thing is, if you're not using the lighting mod that I'm using in this video, this is compatible with other lighting mods as long as they don't add their own custom clouds, which means you have to check first and see if it's because it's going to be pointless to put this in there if it has its own custom clouds. They're going to one of them is going to overwrite the other and it's just not going to look the way that you expect it to. But yeah, I'm going to show you what mod I use to get clouds that look absolutely gorgeous in my Sims 3 game. Alright, this mod is called Realistic Clouds for The Sims 3 by Nilxis. I, I don't know how to say their name. Um, but this is a fantastic mod, and it's very simple. It's the same as everything else. You're just going to download the package file. Um, it's going to be in a zip thing, so you're going to need like 7-zip of Rinrar again. And you'll just put it into whatever folder you feel like within your packages folder. I always put it in my lighting mod. That's just where I put all my graphics stuff. Um, you can just throw it in there as long as you put it in your package folder. 
it will show up in your game. The next thing I'm going to show you is the mod that I use to get sharper, cleaner textures in my game for the terrain. So like this road and sidewalk and grass that you see here, actually I'm not sure if the sidewalk is any sharper, but I know the road and the grass are a little bit sharper. Uh, in The Sims 3, the textures that come default in the game can be pretty blurry and have ugly tiling issues, but I think that this looks a lot better and it just makes the game look more crisp. So this mod is called The Sims 3 HD Texture Series Terrain Pack. It is on Mod The Sims. Um, obviously, I'm going to link it down below, and as you can see, it upgrades a lot of the terrain textures that come in the game, making them a lot cleaner and sharper, and it actually comes in multiple different uh, sizes, which is very helpful for those with limited rigs. I do not recommend, personally, downloading the 4K textures. I, myself, use the 2K textures because it just uses a lot of memory if you are having these huge uh, sizes for the files and for the textures. And it could cause crashing because the sims 3 i believe it only uses two gigabytes of view i don't i don't know i don't know the technology behind it i know that it can make the game crash though and the sims 3 doesn't need any help in that department so i try to stay away from overloading it with huge textures or anything like that and the 2k textures in my opinion look really good and they strike a nice balance if you're on a more limited machine because i do have a pretty powerful machine uh, you're gonna want to go with the 1k textures or maybe just skip this all together if you don't mind the way that the textures look because it actually doesn't really change the um, Style of the textures. It's not gonna change the art style of the game It's just making them a little clearer. So if you don't mind a little bit of a blur It doesn't really matter that much then but I think this is a great um, Mod to have to just sharpen your game now, as you can see with this one, just to make sure you've done it right, there's going to be seven parts to this. So it's a lot more than the other mods. So you want to make sure you have all these files if you want to get the full HD reworking of all the textures. I do believe there's still some terrain that is missing with this. So not every single terrain paint has been upgraded, but a lot of them have and they look great. Okay, so by this point in the tutorial, if you've been following the steps correctly, you should have a game that looks something like this so far, as far as lighting is concerned, as far as textures are concerned. And so this might be fine for some people, but I like to take it to the next step. So I want to show you how you can set up reshade in your game so that when, as you can see, when I toggle reshade, it makes a huge difference in the colors of the game and just the vibrancy it makes it so much more vibrant and it almost gives it like a cartoony art style which i love i just love the way that it looks in the sims 3. all right so the next step is going to be installing reshade so what you're going to do is go to the link that i have in my description below reshade.me slash download you're going to click the download button it'll bring you down here and you're going to download reshade whatever the newest version is which is 5.8 right now it's going to download and you're going to get an ex an executable file so you're going to open that up and run it it'll bring up this menu now it's very unlikely that it's going to actually find the sims 3 on its own so you'll probably have to go to browse windows and mine is under program files it might be under program files 86 so check there as well but you're looking for ea games the sims 3 you'll go to game bin and then you're going to try to find the sims 3 executable so this is right here for me i mean it's going to be right here for you too if you go to this uh area um and that's what you're going to want to double click on You'll hit next. You're going to allow it to make whatever changes it needs to make. And when it asks you the rendering API, Sims 3 uses DirectX 9, so that's what you're going to click. And so, yes, I already have Reshade installed here, so this won't pop up for you if you don't already have it. Um, so I'm just going to hit update and see if that works. Okay. Now you're going to get a question on here at one point that asks you what effects you want to include or you want to install and I hit all of them so I would check all of them and then hit next that way you have just because whatever preset you choose it might use certain effects and you want to make sure that you have them all installed so that you don't have to go and install them later so yeah when it asks you that check all of them and then hit next and then you'll just be finished and if you want to see if it installed correctly all you have to do is go to the installation for the sims 3 and it should yes you should have reshade preset reshade log reshade dot any all that crap and then i'm going to show you what preset i use all right so i'm launching the sims 3 now when you first launch it with reshade it might take a minute for it to load and you might see like the little icon at the bottom of your task bar thing doesn't pop up right away and it should, when you launch it for the first time, it's going to load a bunch of uh, the shaders. It's going to say compiling shaders. You might get errors. That really doesn't matter. It doesn't affect anything. Um, as long as it's saying compiling shaders and everything, that means you have it installed correctly. Now, obviously, I already have a preset installed. 
which I could toggle on and off by hitting the hotkey that I've assigned. Um, so when you first launch it, it's not gonna look any different because you don't have a preset installed yet. Now you could go in, theoretically, and open it. You use the home key if it's the first time installing it. I use Shift F12 because I've changed my hotkeys by going into the settings. But you can go in on your own, and if you wanted to just go and make your own preset, you could play around with all the different um, effects that you have installed. That's another benefit to installing all the effects. If you want to try to create your own shader, depending on what you like, you can do that. However, if you do not want to make your own preset, and you like the look of the preset that I'm using here, I will show you what it is and how you can install that. So this is what it looks like with the preset on, this is what it looks like when it's off. So if you've done everything in the tutorial up to this point, this is what your game would look like without reshade or preset, and if you're fine with that, then you could skip this part. But I think reshade is really helpful for making the game look even more vibrant and colorful and just nice to look at. Now, it's kind of funny because this preset was actually made for The Sims 2, not The Sims 3, but I think it looks really good in The Sims 3, so I use it. This is Turnip Head, a The Sims 2 reshade preset. I'll link, obviously, this down below. Um, and I just download the first file. The second file adds, like, cinematic depth of field and some other stuff that's pretty good for screenshots. I don't really care about that. I don't use that. You can mess around with that if you want, but this is what I use, is this file right here. So that's what I'm going to show you how to install. So once you've downloaded that, you're going to drag turniphead underscore falky dot any, the any file that you downloaded, into your game bin folder. It doesn't have to be anywhere in particular, you don't want to put it in a subfolder. Just throw it right in here in the Sims 3 directory, and Reshade will be able to find it. Now then, the final step in getting to actually use the preset is to make sure when you go into Reshade, you'll open up the menu like normal, you click up here. Now this lets you scroll through different files and different presets that you have. And you're going to go and find turniphead underscore falky dot any, and you're going to select that preset. I already have it select, so it's not going to do anything. And that is how you install a preset in Reshade, and this is the preset that I use. Now there's a couple of changes that I make. I believe I, yeah. So this here I untick because it makes the game a little bit too blown out and blurry for me. So PPFX Bloom, I always untick that. Everything else I've left the same as... Just the way that it comes. Actually, I got rid of depth of field as well. So that is the other thing that I took out. Uh, it doesn't even work in The Sims 3. It's very glitchy, depth of field with reshade. Um, and you have to turn edge uh, smoothing off, which I don't want to do. So I would rather just not have depth of field. It's not necessary to me personally, and it affects your ability to play the game because it screws up the UI and everything. So at this point in the tutorial, you should have a very vibrant, very well lit game that has some sharper textures and it's just a lot prettier and a lot more modernized than The Sims. It doesn't take a lot of effort, it takes like 30 minutes to get everything installed, and then you have a beautiful game. What I will say, however, is Reshade can be pretty resource intensive. If you don't have a good graphics card, you might want to skip that part and just go with a lighting mod and maybe the smallest version of the texture mod. But in my opinion, this is the most stunning that The Sims 3 can look with this combination of mods. It adds so much brightness, sharpness, and just a beautiful color tone to the entire game that makes it look very fresh and like cartoony. I don't know, I just like the cartoony look and I hope that other people like it as well. Now, I'm not gonna go into a ton of detail about this and list off every single thing in the video that I use, but another way to upgrade The Sims 3 is to get custom content hair, custom content skins, and custom content clothing for your Sims. The Sims themselves are probably the most dated aspect of The Sims 3's graphics, and unfortunately there's not really a great fix for it, but custom content really can do wonder. So if you like the look of my Sims, I'm gonna try to link the skins that I'm using, and I'll link to different places where you can find hair and stuff that will really upgrade your Sims and make them look, you know, a lot better looking than default Sims 3 Sims in my opinion. Default replacements for eyes and skins and stuff can go a long way. But yeah, I hope you guys found this video helpful. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments down below. Like I said, everything's going to be linked, and I'll put some more directions in the description just to guide people through if you're just skimming the video and you're not sure what you're doing or anything like that. But I hope if you do try this tutorial out that you are pleased with the results and that your game looks as great as you want it to. Thank you guys so much for watching and have a wonderful day.